so as it turns out, I find out that him, he has to carry everything he owns with him because he doesn't have any place to store it. You know, he that's that's the definition of a house. You store stuff you own. But uh, so well, we we go over to the bus stop and he tells me that he, he may had he made a big gamble there by leaving everything he owned at the bus stop just so he could wait in the Hilton for half an hour and he hoped that it would still be there. But uh, but he he wasn't uh, it was it was in good faith that he said that because he realized that I hadn't come. And later, as I would find out through long conversation, that when when we we he asked me what I thought when then when he wasn't there, and I asked him what he thought when I like that the reverse. But um, I, the way he said it, I thought that made me laugh. He said that when uh, when he was waiting for me and I never showed up. He, he used the quote, the little shit stood me up. And that was funny. But we went to go get his bags, and we carried everything over, and it was, it was heavy stuff. And we went back. This guy, my friend, who was not really my friend, but after that he became my friend, kind of. His name was Kevin. No, his name actually wasn't Kevin, but I'm going to call him Kevin, because that's what I always called him, kind of. His name wasn't Kevin, but... Uh, he was walking with me on the way back when we were carrying his stuff, and uh, I realized that he was kind of there to look out for me, and he had he had dis he had mistrusted the uh, the homeless guy. So he, he <laughs> the way he talked was so obvious, just it it was it was comically obvious, really, like you see in the movies when people act act like they're lying or whatever. But he talked very loudly and very and he. Uh, like, every word was very easy to hear, just the way he said it. It was very, I don't know, even presidential, kind of. But he asked who this guy was and what he was doing. And, and John, I found out his name was John Swanson later, as he shared with me. John was kind of uh, much much so the opposite. He talked quietly and kind of looked down and uh, all that. And, you know, didn't give long answers, but, but this guy... He was there, he was there to look out for me, or and he asked me what I was doing, and I told him that I was going to take him to dinner and all that stuff. I met him at the bus stop, and uh, so we went up to my room, and carrying all the stuff, we went up the elevator, and back to my room. I told him that I, I told him that he could take a a shower before we ate, and uh, he was in the room. He went in the bathroom with his stuff, and uh, you know was preparing, and and Kevin was talking to me. And he asked me, the first, I think the first question he asked me was if I was a Christian. And I was kind of surprised when he said that. And, but then I completely understood why. And, you know, it's, you completely understand, don't you? You know, it's. Yeah. Yeah. Like, doing, like, doing it out of obligation. Like, being told that that's a good thing. Yeah. To, like, treat yeah. this guy to dinner. And, and I said, no, that, you know, I was atheist and. And he, he and he was surprised when I said that, but we talked more, and I told him like I told awesome. I told him about Platonic objective idealism, and we talked a lot about like religion and and stuff. And as it turned out later, when I talked to John, he told me that that was the most comforting thing that he could hear, that when he went in the bathroom, uh, like he he said he could have heard like two guys whispering or like going through drawers or not saying anything. And that would have been a lot different than we were talking about philosophy. We were, we were really comfortable and really calm. And when it, when I started doing this, I thought that all the risk had been placed on me. But really, when he explained it to me, there is very much risk involved in him. That he said that, uh, you know, us two guys, when he walked out of the bathroom, you know, we, I, we could have been laying on the bed naked, smiling or, you know, holding ropes. I don't know, but all kinds of different things. And and he talked about on the street. He could have just been another yes, corpse. Yes, exactly. That, that on on the street, things can mean different things. Was uh, was a quote that he said many times. And uh, that that words can mean different things. And uh, but as it turned out, he came out and he was actually looking pretty good. With I mean, he had clean clothes, except for the pants, and uh, he didn't shave. And I asked him why. He said it probably would have taken hours, but. Uh, yeah, so, so, uh, we went down, I, uh, I asked Kevin if he wanted to join us, and he said no, which, 
you know, it was good, I guess, since it was between him and I. And if Kevin was there the whole time, that would have been painfully awkward and, you know, no intimacy would have ever happened. But we went there and we started eating and we talked about each other's lives. I asked him about his, he asked me about mine. I gave him the quick biography, uh, where I was born, where I moved, my education, just, you know, stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, but we talked over dinner, a long dinner, and then afterwards we uh, talked upstairs, we talked in the lounge, in the lobby, we uh, walked outside, he was going to show me some of his, I think he called them his friends or something, but they weren't his friends, because all his friends were also homeless people who were all either alcoholics or schizophrenics, and that... Yeah, that kind of thing. And, and he said that, you know, he couldn't remember the last time he had a good conversation. And he, he even asked me, is this a good conversation? Because he, he didn't know if there, this was just a normal conversation or if it was a really good one. And, uh, yeah, yeah, but the, the intellectual conversation kind of was, he, he thought that was the biggest deal that he, he hadn't had one in so long. But uh, that was the first night, and we said goodbye at uh, 3.30, I think. And I kind of real, I kind of realized, hmm, I'm sending this guy out back in the street, but that make, it makes sense. I mean, I only knew him for a very short time, and I, I don't know if we'd want to go to sleep with each other in the same room. Plus, my roommate, actually, she had the same room. My roommate probably wouldn't want him sleeping in his bed, but... But stuff like that, and and there are no hard feelings at all, and he, you know, he didn't even ask or probably think about it really. But so he went out there, and uh, he told me about how he had to sit up in the bus stop because if he was laying down, the police would come and tell him to move. But uh, so we got up at eight thirty the next day because the I told him what the biggest question was for me of the whole time was, is there anything I can do to genuinely help you? Not not just like a night of food or fun or conversation, but something that will either last or build upon itself. Or, uh, you know, if there's anything you want to do, you know, if I can help you with that. And he responded very quickly. I was surprised. And he said, pants. That... He told me he'd been wearing the same pair of pants for three months every day, and that probably the best thing and the easiest thing to do would get him a pair of pants. So that's why we woke up at 30 the next day. We walked to Target, and I bought him a pair of pants. And, uh... That was... That was, uh... That's mostly what happened. I mean, we, we talked... Uh, like I said, we talked from 6.30 until 3.30, and then we talked from 8.30 until that night. Actually, we stopped talking at 4.30 because I told him I had to get ready for my award ceremony. And, uh, so that was that. That was kind of the product of, of what, what, uh, Singer is talking about, this, this question. Because I always knew about this, this rationality being no different. And, uh, the first chance I got, I kind of, I kind of went through with it. But I, and I found out, like, who these people are, kind of. Because I've always just been told to stay away from them or don't look at them. And, you know, if they ask you for money, don't give them any money. And I, I wouldn't give them any money because really I see that as that's not genuinely helping them. But I think the, I think the time I did spend with him was genuinely helping him. Because it gave him hope and reminded him of a previous existence, really. And that was all that mattered. What's your name? John Swanson. Where are we? We are in Max Hotel Room in the city of Anaheim, California. And how did we meet? Mac came up to me and offered to buy me dinner at a bus stop. 